This is a re-recording of the session, the webinar session that occurred on September 12th. This is focused on UX UI design tips and it's being re-recorded due to the audio issues that we had. Uh, today I will be walking through just some basic design tips that will help improve the look, feel, and flow of your own Power Apps. So just to give you a little information on my background, I am a I am a product designer on the Power Apps customer success team, so I work directly with clients to help improve the UX and UI of their Power Apps. I also work a bit with the product team and help improve the, the product itself. And I will be walking through some of these tips right now. So the first one that I want to start off with is designing for the device. Now, designing for the device is extremely important because when you start an app you need to know what you're designing for. It's the first thing that you need to set in your app settings. And the reason why you need to know what this is is because step two is actually sketching and you need to know what you're going to sketch for whether it be a tablet or a phone. Uh, the sizes will change depending on what you need and you need to think about this because it's it's how the end user consumes your app. Is the tablet more appropriate or is a phone? Um, it depends on the environment that the end user is consuming your app. If there's one central location where a tablet is set up and everybody's approaching that tablet to use the app or is everyone on the go and they're on their phones, it's just something that you need to think about before you even begin doing anything else. Um, and the screen sizes also vary for a tablet. The width of the screen is much wider in the default settings than it is an iPad. So even before you begin anything else, you need to know what rough measurements you're going to have to have. Okay, so one is design for the device. And two is sketching, as I said earlier. And sketching is probably the most important thing that you need to take away from this webinar. Um, it's extremely important because it it's establishes the architecture and flow of everything within your app. And it's, if you aren't organized um, or set up appropriately, appropriately in this stage, you'll, your app will end up being very confusing. Um, so what I suggest is uh, organizing your information by what you want accomplished on um, each screen in a sequence of events that makes sense to you and the end user of the app. So in the images off to the right hand side I sort of listed out what I wanted accomplished on each screen and how they how an end user would get there. So you would want to view the inventory and then after you view the inventory you would maybe click on a particular item and view the details about that item, maybe where it is uh, within the building, when it was last checked out, whatever information is valuable to you in that app. And then the third screen that I had envisioned was um, adding new items uh, and filling out a form to add a new item. That's something that you need to think about as well in your app. Uh, break down that information into small digestible chunks that it has a, a logical order of things. And then once you're organized in your thoughts, then you can begin sketching. Your sketches don't need to be beautiful by any means. What we're trying to accomplish is just the flow of your app. Um, because without it, it's going to be extremely confusing. And it's also best to start with very, very rough sketches because you don't want to focus on the look and feel of your app during this stage because it, it'll get very distracting. You can start focusing on icons and images that are being used and it's, it's not going to get you anywhere during this stage. You just, you, what needs to happen is to just focus on what makes sense uh, and don't make anything super pretty. Use uh, boxes with X's on them just to represent images or icons and just use simple lines to represent text. Um, you can draw out buttons, but don't, don't focus on beautiful details. Anyone can sketch. It's super easy. So once you sketch something that makes sense to you, find someone who would be the end user of your app or the ideal end user of your app and give them a task that you 
need accomplished within the app. So if your app is checking out inventory, bring that paper app to the user, the person that you found to test, and ask them to accomplish checking out an item and just see how they perform. Do not interrupt them. Just watch and listen. That's extremely important because what you're looking for is to just see how people are reacting and what they expect to happen next. So you want the app to match their expectations because this app isn't designed for you, it's designed for many, many people. And the, it needs to be easy to understand for everybody. Um, so if, if you don't use your test, it's pretty noticeable that may, like a button made sense to you, but a button doesn't make sense to the end user. And it needs to be completely understandable by everybody. And user testing is one of the best ways to discover all of this information. So once you've user test, tested, um, you, I advise sketching even one more time to make sure that everything makes perfect sense and uh, just sketch it all out. It's fun. Uh, and the next series of tips that I have is design for the, or sorry, design best practices. So the first one was um, design for the device, and then the second is sketching. And now once you're in Power Apps and ready to go, you have design best practices to be following. Now I think color is extremely important, and it's important because it's not just to look good, it actually serves a functional purpose. Um, if you aren't using colors that are appropriate for your app, it, it, can, it can end badly. So for, if, if you are designing your text color to be a lighter gray shade just because you think it's pretty, that's great, but it, sometimes it's not readable. And if anyone has a disability where they're uh, colorblind, they won't be able to read your app, and your app needs to be readable by absolutely everybody. And so we need to account for accessibility and design for everybody in mind. So I advise using a color contrast analyzer. Uh, there's a link to it in the deck. And all you have to do is type in your hex code and the hex code of your foreground and your background and see if it passes the test. And what you're looking for is a pass for the double A. Triple A would be great, but double A is, is really what you need to be shooting for. Um, and if, if you have an RGB code, you can use the tool in, that's provided in the link in the text off to the left-hand side to convert RGB to hex. Now this is the tool in action showing two um, two versions, one that fails accessibility and one that passes accessibility. And what you're looking for is on the left-hand side. You want to pass accessibility. Okay. And my next set of design best practices is font and font sizes. They play an extremely important role in your app because it needs to be readable by everybody. Um, and I would highly suggest avoiding cursive fonts such as Great Vibes um, and to shoot for fonts that are much more simple and easy to read like the Toe or Sago. You know, there's also uh, minimum font sizes that you should be using. Now, not everybody has the same vision and we make, need to make sure that everything's readable. So you can't make text super tiny. And it may be tempting to shrink a text just so that it'll fit more on a page, but do not do that. It won't be readable and it, it'll be too challenging to use. So I suggest for tablets to use a minimum font size of 10 and a minimum font size of subtext uh, of a size 8 for a tablet. Now for phones, it's a little bit different. I would suggest using a minimum font size of 14 for body text and a minimum font size of 12 for subtext. Don't ever go lower than that. As um, last set of best practices is control consistency and alignment. And this is very underestimated in apps. If, if things aren't aligned or styled appropriately, it makes the app very hard to digest. If, uh, so if you see off to the right hand side, it says phone number. And that's all out of whack. You can, kind of can't even tell what phone number is even referencing. It looks like it 
is super close to a count number, and that makes it really hard to understand what you're filling out in this form. So we need to make sure that everything is consistent. You notice the indents are all very off and the font sizes are different. And this is common because you can often forget what you set the styles for in your controls. So maybe you set one input box control to do one thing, it indents 20, and then another you accidentally set it to 12 without thinking. So you just need to make sure that you're setting things up appropriately from the beginning and making sure that it's all consistently aligned. And later on I'll show you an app that uh, explains how to do that. And here is a good example off to the left hand side and a poor example off to the right hand side. And now I will take you through um, the app that I just told you about that will So this app So this is the app I was just talking about that has everything set up appropriately so that it is easy for you to go in and change it yourself and everything's perfectly aligned in a manner that makes it easy to edit and understand. So this particular app is an app that just uh, shows projects, the details of the project and the required documents that are associated with that project. And you see there's filters off to the left hand side that'll let you see what, uh, what projects specific people have and the status of those projects. So if I uncheck in progress, I'll see all of the projects for everybody that are completed or not started. And if I check that again and then I remove a name, I can see all of the projects for these specific people. Now. Go over here. What I have done is set up this particular file to be easy to edit so that you can rebrand for yourselves. So what I did was rename this um, control, this rectangle control, to header rectangle. And I colored it a blue color for the Contoso brand. Now, if you notice, I'm changing the color right now and these other colors are changing at the exact same time. Now they're changing at the same time because I've hooked it up in the formulas to be changing together. So anytime I change header rectangle dot fill, it's changing with it. But it's using the color fade function. So it's taking 80% of that header rectangle fill and lightening it 80%. It's also doing it right here in the gallery. And you see that it's taking 90% of that color. And what this does is just make it super easy to rebrand so that you can use any color that you feel appropriate for your brand. And use a shade of it. Super easy. Now I've also hooked up the fonts to be easy to change as well because no one wants to go back and spend a whole bunch of time editing controls individually. So I set it up so that it would be extremely easy to revise. So I've got everything hooked up to follow the same font as this header label control. It's using Sego right now. So if you notice, I can switch to a different font, such as Patrick Hand, and all of the label controls will change to follow that exact font setting. Uh, because it is using the exact same font. So it's taking header label and it's saying I'm going to use the same font as that header label control, which is this original one. So we'll change it back to Sego so it's easier to read. Now I've also 
set things up so that everything's aligned appropriately. As I was discussing, control alignment is very important. So I've hooked up all of these label controls to move with this label control, which is title of project. So if you notice that I'm nudging it over to the right, in fact, to the left, and everything is changing with it at the exact same time. This makes it easy to edit files, and it's also just much more aesthetically pleasing. Now, I've also revised the Y property as well. Now, what this is doing is taking this control, this project manager control, label control, and it's taking the Y value plus the height of the header, project, project manager header, plus two. Now, all of these controls are doing the same exact thing. So it's all plus two, plus two, plus two. So they're all exactly the same distance from one another. This makes it very easy to read. The header controls are doing the same thing. So it's taking this label control, which is manager name.text, and saying that it wants to take the Y value of the manager name text dot Y and plus 50, so that it's 50 pixels distance between these two controls. Now, all of them are doing that same exact thing where it's taking status text dot y plus 50 just for consistency. Making sure everything's easy and appropriately aligned. Now one other thing I want to point out is these colors that I've picked off to the left hand side to indicate completed or in progress. Now, I picked an orange and a green color, but let's see what this, these colors look like to somebody who is colorblind. Now, I have a simulator open that shows what it looks like under normal vision. And then if we adjust to different settings, we can see what it looks like through the eyes of someone who is colorblind. And notice that it's different. It changes depending on what I'm clicking on. This is important because you're seeing what other people see. And if, if they can't see that color difference, they don't understand. It's, it's, not, it's not visually indicating anything. Yes, you can read completed and in progress, but if you aren't choosing appropriate colors, it makes your app harder to use. And your app should be easy to use for everybody. But this contrast is probably good enough. But... If you notice, if we click on a different version, these colors now look exactly the same. And we should probably go back into our app and revise what we've done to make sure that it's easy to see. So all you'd have to do is click on the label motif and adjust the colors to something that has a little bit more contrast. And you can play around with that on your own. I'll just pick red for now. There it is. Take a screenshot, load that screenshot into the simulator, and there you have it. There is a color difference now. Now it's easy to understand that there is a difference between these kinds of projects. So I highly advise everyone to go through these steps on their own so that you can see what your app looks like. Um, and your app will be so much better off if you go through all of these um, all of these steps so just to recap the the main things I want you to take away from this uh, webinar is to design for the device think about what you are designing for tablet or phone what is most appropriate for the end user of your app and sketching always sketch it out Sketch everything out to make sure that you're fully organized and accounting for all of the details. And then user test your sketches to make sure that it's understandable for everyone. And then follow these best practices, which are choosing appropriate colors with enough contrast using the color analyzer. And to make sure that you're using appropriate fonts and font sizes for the device that you've chosen. And then finally, to make sure that your controls are consistently aligned. 
I hope you find these tips useful, and thank you for joining.